Always something going on, guys. Always something happening. I want to show you this grill right here. See that grill? It's where I cook my steak sometimes. But Miss Daisy, she likes to cook burgers and stuff, right? Well, yesterday, Miss Daisy got hungry for burgers. And she said, how about some burgers? Why don't you fire that grill up and uh, I'll grill up some burgers. I said, man, I had my, I've been thinking about that last ribeye I've got in there all day. She said, all right, well, you eat your ribeye and I'll have some hamburger. I said, perfect. So I said, she said, I'll cook them. I said, well, don't cook my steak. You know how I like to do my own steak. She said, that's fine. I'll cook the burgers. I said, don't throw my steak on yet. Cook your burgers. Let me know when you're done. And then uh, she said, oh, I'll give you a heads up when I'm done. And then you can do your thing. All right. So she did her burgers. She came in the house. She said, well, these are chilling. I'm going to go get a shower. I said, all right. I'm going to get my steak on. So I went and threw my steak on. It's hot grill now, mind you. This is a sanitary sewer ring and cover. Ring, rather. I built this thing years ago. It works out slick. Anyway, there's some, it's lined with, it's lined with fire bricks, and it's only from the coals. I use Kingford coal on, and from them top and them coals, that whole bottom has let fire bricks in it, and then I ringed it here. There's a steel plate, two foot square steel plate about yay thick, three eighths thick underneath that. So anyway, um, Anyway, back to the, 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 the grilling story. I got that one last, it was about a pound and a quarter ribeye. It was looking good, guys. I mean, that thing was nice. I put my sea salt and pepper on. I came out and threw it on the grill. I went in the house and uh, gonna crank me up some, some uh, iced tea. And I was gonna sit on that bench right there. And uh, while it cooked, I could, you know, watch it, make sure it was perfect. And uh, I went inside, and you see that window right there? I could look through to see this grill, right? And uh, I went inside and making up my iced tea, I looked out, and a great big black buzzard landed right here. It was hot. That iron's hot, right? But I've seen, I've seen, I've seen buzzards eating armadillos off the as asphalt that's, you know, Kajillion degrees they must have tough feeties on them i don't know guys but he hit this grill grabbed my steak and flew off to parts unknown yep old steve wasn't a happy camper with that one no he was not and i went in miss daisy was still in the shower i said miss daisy looks like i'm eating hamburgers today what why? Because uh, a big old black buzzard just flew down and got my steak and flew off with it. Guys, there was no sympathy at all. She was laughing so hard, I thought she was going to slip and kill herself in that bathtub. She was laughing so hard. Then she comes out and she calls everybody that she knows on planet Earth and tells them about my black buzzard story. So that's my story. I tell you what, I mean... Sometimes nature doesn't uh, know that I have feelings, you know, but no one seems to care about old Steve-O anymore. But anyway, here's what we're doing today. I've got that experiment going here, and uh, yeah, old Steve-O's got it going on here, I think. Come on in here in the barn and check this out now. Come in here and check this out. Here's what I'm doing. Here we are. All right, look at this. Look at this space alien thing here now guys yeah look at this thing all right i got a pencil in here i got a pencil in here kind of temporary like it's a little temporary plug because this is all experimental right i got a whole bucket full of these plugs you know i i saw a two and three quarter hole in all my beehive lids you've seen it then you've seen this contraption, you save the plug and you put a piece of dunnage wood on it, right? Glue it on, you, you hit it with your T-nailer, right? Well, I, this came in my sleep last night. 
came in my sleep. My dad used to do this stuff all the time. He'd, he'd, he'd have a mechanic. He was a mechanic, a real good mechanic. But, you know, even the best of the best get stumped once in a while. And he'd come in scratching his head. And can't figure it out right now. I said, well, what are you going to do, Dad? What are you going to do with that? And he said, well, i got to sleep on it. That's what he always used to say. I'll sleep on it. And Mom told me, a lot of times he'll wake up in the middle of the night and he said, I got it. She said, she said, what do you got? He said, I figured it out. She said, okay, dear, go back to sleep now. Bye-bye. So he'd go back to sleep. The next morning, sitting around the, uh, sitting around the table, uh, I said, Dad, did you figure it out? He sure did. I figured it out last night. But sometimes it'd take him several nights sleep, you know. No, I didn't figure it out. Or you'd, you'd figure it out, and then he'd go try it, and then it didn't work. He said, i got to sleep on it some more. So I don't know if I've inherited that, that craziness or not, but anyway, that's a little story on the sleep disorders. But anyway, uh, yeah, and so I'm thinking about this whole thing with this, with this beehive, how to get this vapor in this hive, right? So I've got all these things. I got all these plugs here. All these plugs. So I clamp them in the vise over here, right? Put my drill on, and this is one and a half. Yes, sir. That is one and a half inch bit hole saw. Well, I've already got a starter hole in here, right? So I clamped it in the vise so it don't get away from me. And I bore it through about halfway, and then flip it over and come through. And I, that way you get a nice clean hole action. I didn't even knock off this little feather edge, you know, on it. I didn't do that. I fired up my T-nailer. There's an inch and a quarter in there. Got a little crazy with that one. That popped out. No big deal. We just kind of like, you know, hammered it down. And then the nozzle on my, on the Rick's vaporizer, uh, slide right in a quarter inch hole. So I've got a quarter inch bit here. And what I did is just drill them all, and, and one at a time, one at a time, I put on here, stacked them up. You can see down in that borehole there, right? So I just drilled one at a time, and then I stacked, stacked them up. I already had this piece done. This was a finished plug of mine right here, finished plug, nothing special. These I use when I'm transporting, but they normally have a top on it, you know, hole like that in, on them. So uh, that, that I just glue to the bottom and that seals off that hole, right? So I stacked them up. These are three quarters of an inch thick. So one, two, three. We'll put the nozzle almost in the center of the third plug. When my vaporizer is flush on top of my beehive. Alright. Then I glued one more on top as a plug, you see. You see that's a plug, right? But it's got a hole in it. So here's my whole plug right here. Boom. I'll cut that off and glue it in, right? Let's go out and test drive this thing, guys. Be right out there and we'll get her test drove and let's see what happens. My my Rick's tool, the nozzle goes just about that far in. Just about that far into that hole, that inch and a half hole. Alright? So that's that. Let's go test drive this puppy. Alrighty guys, got our tool heating up here. Wear gloves when you do this, okay guys? This puppy is hot. I'm gonna set her down here. Take my welder's glove and push down on it, snug her up good. Right. Alright, let's come over here to our hole. Stick in our hole here and rotate it like that. Boom, boom. Now your unit's sitting on this on this thing, right? All that gas is going down in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, buddy. Look at it coming out the bottom. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But she's coming out the bottom. There it is. Look at it. Look at it boiling out of there, guys. 
Look at it. You knew, you knew, you, you knew that old Steve-O would come up. I gotta get out of this smoke for it. Before it kicks my hiney. All right, there we go. Yeah, that's it, guys. That is the trick right there now. Now, of course, you're not leaving a pencil in there. Come on. Unless you want to pull it out and make notes, you know. But anyway, just cut that off. Plug it with some piece of wood, whatever. Glue it in there. But that's it. I got a success story here now. I just got off the phone with Rick. And, and we were brainstorming. But you see, he said... Let me pull, unplug this thing right quick here. He's, he saw the last video and he said he's done, I knew he'd done extensive, extensive testing, you know, as to what works, what doesn't. And what works is, see, you can turn this, you can turn this now, see, and pull it right out of that hole. You, you got it upside down, right? You turn it, boom, you set it right down on there and it plugs tight in there and all that gas is going through that hot. But here's the trick. What what we talked about I was you know I'd mentioned I think I mentioned to Queen Bee out there that uh, I was gonna have Rick try to put a, a long or maybe a six inch tube on this thing ooh that's hot guys that is hot anyway that won't work and and after I went and slept on it, you know. I got to thinking about it. What I said to, in that video. Well, if you put a steel brake line in there, all right, and you extend it any longer, it will it will come back to solids again in that tube because that steel it doesn't retain that heat like copper does. This is a copper pipe. And he experimented with the diameters of his pipe and the length. That's how he came up with this. The length of the tube and the size of the tube. That gives you the jet action nozzle coming out of there and pushing that chemical into that vapor into that hive. So you have to have this size and this size piping. Okay. And it dawned on me. As I was sleeping and dreaming about this thing. And then I started thinking of the feeder hole. And I said, I've already got a hole. I've already got these things. I've got a bunch of these things, donuts. So yeah, there it is, guys. I'll cut this off. I'm gonna make about four of these. That way I can go ahead and jump from hive to hive ahead of my vaporizing. And prep them because when you pull this plug out of these hives these bees are going to come out and want some booty all right so what you do you go along with your smoker you pop take your jar off I got buckets as you know on all these hives take your bucket off take the take the uh, feeder jar off and just as soon as you take it off give them a couple pops of smoke they will back down then take your your little new plug action stick it in they're not they may come up in this tube here it's no big deal they make the bees may rush up in there that's so that's fine when they get a whiff of this gas they are getting out of there jack fast okay so you could set up a couple three of these ahead of what you're doing and then while this one's cooking you can get, get that job done then come back pull the pull this out and leapfrog it ahead on the next on the next hive all right so I think, you know, beekeepers, they just keep playing with things until they get it, you know. And uh, I think with this combo, Rick's tool and Steve-O's plug operation here, I think you've got a thumbs upper on this. Because that way the bees are going to just pile drive that vapor down through all of that nest and out the bottom. I have screens on all these hives. I run them year-round screen bottoms. Now, further north, you probably don't get away with that. But, no biggie. No biggie. You can go ahead and put your uh, 
uh, solid bottom board on there and you can throw you can throw a towel on the front of the entrance so you got an entrance here throw a towel on that thing leave it on for five minutes or whatever come back and pull it after you gas them you could if you want to leapfrog if you want to leapfrog these to the next hives you can have extra plugs which i have plenty you just drop them in the hole put this one on the next hive and keep on trucking okay so that's a little uh you know vaporized trick on that and uh watch them stakes guys the black buzzards will get you be happy be strong we got to keep getting on and by the way today's steve-o's birthday 71 years old 71 years young don't ever forget it don't ever forget it i'm going backwards my age is going forwards, but my, you know, my whole being is going reverse, okay? Keep that in mind, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.